Hello, my name is Kelly Anton, Siemens HMI and SCADA specialist with PCC. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to configure user administration on a Siemens comfort panel. So I already have a screen created that's called user admin screen. So this screen here, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to protect this I.O. field so that you have to log in before you can actually change values. Then we'll also, in this lesson, display the current user that's logged in, the current group number that they belong to, because that group number can be used to control visibility later on in you know, further applications. I also will configure the ability to log in, log off uh, with these buttons over here. And then I also have an alarm buffer on the screen for displaying the status or displaying status messages of the user administration. So the first thing I'm going to do is move over to my project tree and I'm going to locate user administration. I'll double click on user administration and that will take me into the user administration editor. In the upper right hand corner there are two tabs. There are users and there are groups. So the users will belong to groups and then the groups will have authorizations that are assigned to them. So when you're logged in during runtime, you have to be logged in as a user that belongs to a group that contains the authorization that's assigned to the object that you want to operate. So from a user standpoint, I'm going to add in a new user. There's always a default um, user that's called administrator. You would have to assign your own password to that. So I'm going to call my first user admin. So I'm going to create my own admin user. And then you have a table editor up above. So I can edit in the table editor or down in the inspector window or properties window. So from an admin perspective, I'm going to select the drop down. You do have to enter in a password. You should use secure passwords. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a very simple password of 555. And I'm going to enter in another 555 just to confirm make sure that I entered in the correct information. So now I have a password that has been assigned to my admin user. The next thing is is for this admin user all right, we have to decide which group it's going to belong to. You do have the ability to create your own groups as well, but I'm going to use the existing groups um, that are already built into the system. So I'm going to make sure that he is the admin user is part of the administrative group. So that is by checking this box here. Now, to see what authorizations the administrator group has access to, I would have to click on the Users Groups tab, and then when I have the administrator group um, selected, it will display all of the authorizations that this user has access to or this group has access to. You can add in your own authorizations as well. Okay, so when you're logged in as admin, you have access to all these groups. If you do add in your own authorization, you will have to check the box that the administrator uh, will have access to it. So I'll go back to my users tab, and so I've got my admin user here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my user admin screen. Okay, so I've got this screen that's already created, and then I will select my I.O. field. And then when you're on the properties for the I.O. field, there's a section that's called security. In the authorization area, you can select the browse button over here, and then this will display all of the all of the authorizations that are included in this application. So I'm going to select the operate privilege. So what that means is, is when I am logged in and I want to operate, or when I, I should say when I want to use a particular tool on the screen that is assigned the operate privilege. Okay. I will have to be logged in as a user that has this privilege assigned to it. So I'll accept it. So now I have to be logged in as a user that, have, that has access to the operate privilege. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to my login button over here. And then I'm going to go to the events tab. So on the events tab, I'm going to select the press event. And I can go to the add function area and select the drop down. There is a group down towards the bottom or a category of user administration functions. So to pop up a login dialog box, if you want to do that by a push button, you would pick the function show logon dialog. So now during runtime, when somebody presses this login button, it is going to show the login dialog box that will allow you to enter in a username and password to, to log in as a different user. I'm going to move over to the log off button, and so on the press event here, I'm going to also browse to the user administration category, but this time I'm going to select the log off function. So now during runtime, when somebody presses the log off button, that will log that user out. Now to configure the current username and current group number, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move over to my project tree and I'm going to select my demo tags. I've already created two tags 
uh, for the purpose here. So the current username is a string tag, so I'm going to drag this I.O. field or tag out onto the screen, and it will automatically put in an I.O. field, and it will be assigned my current user name tag. Then I will also take the current group tag, and I will drop that out onto the screen. And so this will display the current group number. Now these tags aren't automatically filled in. What we have to do is we have to go down to Scheduled Tasks. So over in the project tree, we need to locate Scheduled Tasks and double click on that. So we need to create a scheduled task that is going to um, operate or execute when a user um, change occurs. So I'm going to click on Add New. And I'm, instead of this being called task one, I'm just going to call this one my change user task. Okay. So when I have the change user task selected, I have to pick the trigger as far as when this task is going to execute. So in this drop down, there's an option here for user change. So when I have my task selected, I can come down to the events for my scheduled task and I can select add function. And then within that user administration category, there are some functions that can be assigned. The first one that I'm going to pick is going to be the get username function. So this is going to take the current username and it's going to write it to a tag. So what I'll do is I'll pick the current username tag. Okay, so that now the get username function is going to read the current user and store it in this tag so we can display it on the screen. The next function that I'm going to do is I'm going to select get group number. Now this one is going to display the current group number. So I'll pick my current group number tag and select that. So when this task executes, we're going to fill in the current username, the current group number, and there's one other function that I'd like to add in when I'm working with user administration and it's called trace user change. And all this does is it writes a message to the alarm window, a system message to the alarm window that will display you know, what's going on with the user administration when there's a user change. So now that our scheduled task is completed, I'm going to come back over to my user admin screen. The next thing that I'm going to do is move over to my toolbox and then go down to the controls area. And there's a nice tool that in here that is called the user view tool. So I'm going to find the user view tool and I am going to draw that out on the screen. And this is optional. This is just for runtime management of users during runtime. So now that I have my application or my screen created and my user administration configured, what I'll do is I will highlight my comfort panel. I'll start my simulation. So this will start compiling my project and then the runtime will start and I'm going to select my user admin screen. The first thing I'm going to do is clear out all the messages of the buffer. So this is my alarm buffer down below. So I'm currently not logged in, so there's no user displayed. Current group number of zero means that nobody's logged in as well, because the first group number is going to be one. Now, when you click on an object that requires authorization, you will be prompted to enter in your username, and then you also have to enter in your password. So I'll put in my password and select that. And when I hit OK, now I am logged in as the admin user, which belongs to the group number one, which that was listed in that group number, or the, uh, the group tab. So during runtime then, if I click on this object, I should be able to enter in a value, and so now I can enter in a value. If I press the log off button, that will log me out, and I also have no longer I don't have the ability to change um, users during runtime as well. So you can also press the log on button. That will bring up the login dialog, and you can enter in your username and password again. Select OK, and now I am logged in. So in here, in the alarm buffer, you can actually see that there's messages that are showing up saying that I was you know, logged on, logged off, and I logged back in. So these are the system messages that are showing up. So in order to edit users during runtime, you do have, the, have to have the proper authorization. I'm an admin user, so I'm able to add users during runtime if I wanted to, or I could change the existing users' passwords, etc. you know, through the use of this tool. So in this lesson, I showed you how to configure user administration on the Siemens Comfort Panel.